Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good morning and for that matter, a great day. Um, today I'm planning on going over the Paladins patch notes. If you don't know, Paladins will re be receiving a new update soon. Uh, it's currently about the middle of this season, I'd like to say, or middle of the patch, whatever you want to call it. But next patch should be coming in about two, three weeks. But that's pretty cool. And I'm just going to go over the patch notes with you guys and sort of make sure you're up to date with what's coming out in Paladins. I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the video. Okay, this next update is actually a pretty big deal for Paladins. It is another crossover pass. We've had about three, I want to say? Two, three? I can't remember... I think we've had two, at minimum. Uh, the major crossover this time is going to be with Ruby, which surprisingly works really well. I wasn't expecting it to work so well, because honestly, the Ruby crossover pass, actually, all of the skins look really good, in my opinion. I mean, they look very anime, like anime, um, but like, they're... You know, like, you had to make them a little anime if they're going to go from an anime over to Paladins, who has a very similar art style to an anime. Just slightly more, like, realistic, slightly less, you know, over the top, I feel. Paladins likes to be more grounded with a bit of exaggeration, while anime is just full exaggeration. But... Um, the interesting thing about this one is they're more focusing on the balance of characters and less so on adding new stuff, which is something that people have actually wanted for a while. So we have more or less, they, they, they more or less have, you know, they're not adding a new character because whenever they do, it ends up being this very big, like, issue because the characters either horribly unbalanced or underwhelming and if they're underwhelming you, there's a bunch of people playing them because they're new but then they're bad and it's like then you just have a essentially a useless person on your team but this time there's no new character just balance changes along with a bunch of new stuff they're adding they're adding in total eight new skins i think this patch which is actually pretty reasonable. Like, that, that, that's a lot of skins. If not eight, it's more like six. I don't remember the exact number. But eight's a lot. So, first we have the crossover pass itself with Ruby. Um, This is going to be, you know, it, it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be, you know, you're going to have Vora as Ruby Rose. You're going to have uh, Imani as... Uh, Jian Zhao Wong. Uh, you're gonna have Saudi as Blake. You're gonna have Furia as Wes. Um, all of the skins actually look pretty good. The, this is just a drawing, but like you, when you see them in game, they're gonna actually look pretty good. They're surprisingly natural looking. Like, I was honestly surprised. There's some icons. I think there's an icon of every character. There's a death stamp. Uh, there's the spray. I really love Ruby Rose's mark. I've never actually watched the show, believe it or not. I'm a big fan of the music, and I'm not necessarily a big fan of the story, but, like, I respect anyone who loves this series because it seems like one of those series that you could get very passionate about. Another mediocre loading frame. I feel like loading frames are either bad or really good. This one seems pretty decent, not, like, over the top but not like it's not necessarily the best um it could be a tiny bit better i like simplicity when it comes to loading frames a simple border with something you know telling you it's loaded that's what i personally like but i know that other people like the over the topness this dog is precious it's just a little precious little dog sticker it's just it's so good I, I need more dog in my life. Um, another little avatar. This one's animated, unlike all the others, which are just pictures. Um, if you're a big fan of Ruby Rose, make sure to get this. 
uh, if you're a fan of Rooster Teeth's properties, probably want to support him in some way while also supporting Paladins. Good. Um, they will be giving out the standard crystal amount and everything in the Trials of the Realm. 300. Uh, to my knowledge, they didn't announce the price of the crossover pass. Which means it's probably going to have standard pricing. By standard, I mean standard uh, crossover pass pricing, which is going to be somewhere in the realm of, you know, 550 crystals to about 700, somewhere in between there. A lot of crystals, I know, but like, it, it's a crossover. Um, we'll see the actual price when it comes out. Hopefully it's a little bit on the lower side, but I understand if it's a little higher because these skins definitely needed a lot of work put behind them. So, um, you got Crow, you got a s animated Salem, which is pretty cool. Uh, you may go, hey, these are the Trial of the Realm rewards. There's an MVP pose, an emote, a sticker, two avatars, one's animated. Uh... But that's it for Trials of the Realm. Just standard rewards and a couple sprays and stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Nothing too major, but nothing too minor. I guess another Ray emote if you're, you know, if you're a Ray player. Which I feel like there's a lot more Ray players than there are, you know, a lot of other healers. But uh, they're bringing back a bunch of limited time modes and Trade District only. Uh, a game mode for Trade District in King of the Hill and Team Deathmatch because Trade District is actually getting a rework. They're reworking the look of it and stuff. They are also um, bringing back test maps. There, there's going to be some new test maps including Salt, Eastwatch, Bog, District, and more. So we're actually going to be able to play some of the test maps. Which is actually good because um, they're actually releasing a new map soon. Not in this patch. Which some people would probably say that no new character uh, and no new map. What's the point? I don't like that outlook. I think that this is still a pretty good thing. Um, this patch might be a little bit less than we're normally used to. But it's a lot of skins. It is a lot of skins. And it's just, you know, a lot of balance changes. They took more effort and time and put it into other things instead of adding a new character. And I can respect that. Hopefully they add a new character and or a new map next patch and or both. That would be very cool. I'm sure a lot of people would like that. But I'm okay with them taking a patch off if they need to polish something in the future or polish what they have now, which is what they seem to be doing. Okay, support skirmish, that is pretty cool, nothing major. Uh, Salem, you're going to be able to play Salem as Ceres, pretty good. Uh, Crow as Corvus, this skin is pretty interesting. Out of all the skins, this is surprisingly not my favorite. I like that they give him just a straight up SMG, and yes, it just shoots bullets. It's it's like the most standardized like weapon weapon in Paladins. Most of the weapons are over the top and like, oh, this is a big Gatling gun, but no, this is just a standard. And this is the th big thing this patch for Addy by, she is livid, uh, like absolutely just up in the night over this skin. She. Loves it. I live it's probably not the right word. I'm excited. She loves this skin. Just absolutely loves it. It's Star Sister Lilith. It's Star Witch or Stella or Stellar Witch Lilith. It's just mwah. It's a big, just huge, huge boon for uh anyone who's a Lilith player who likes the Star Sister Pass, which to my knowledge, was the favorite, most favorite patch uh, out of most of them. I have very fond memories of this, and it's going into the but beyond say you know beyond uh, science chest, and you're going to be able to directly purchase it. It is a good skin. I'm glad Lilith finally you know I'm glad they're giving Lilith a good skin next patch. 
it's one of the once again eight new skins that are coming out next patch but i'm i'm glad it made it in here i was honestly hoping for a event pass themed around it but you know it happens um all right and next one defrag denara the prime gaming reward this is just a you know i think it might be a recolor or a refinishing of the digitized denara to my knowledge that's all it is it's just a reformatted skin makes it look very much better and just you know, it's a refresh of old content, which is what they like to do every so often. They like to make old stuff look a bit better. Um, that's more or less what I feel like this patch is really. They're just changing a lot of the old stuff to make it more relevant. This skin looks beautiful. Uh, I haven't seen it too much in game. I assume it's just like uh, digitized Denara, but just a slight bit better. You know, just touches up here and there you know, make the modeling better, make it look more solid and finished. Um, next, uh, new chest, um, all the battle passes of last year. It's going to cost uh, 400 crystals. It's just a combination of all the battle passes. They make one of these every year. There was one for last year. It's or two years ago. Yeah, they're, they're a bit dated, but... This one's for 2022. The previous one was from 2019. So, you know, they refresh every two years. Um, trade district rework. Uh, it looks very good. Nothing that I really have to say about it. It's just a more magistrate looking trade district. If you guys really like trade district, it's a good rework. Um, it's similar to like how stone keep looks and, uh, Magistrate Archive. So, you know, there's now another one of those. Uh, and now they're focused on making a lot of general updates to just things. You now have a bunch of, uh, in, in expanded custom game pool, so you get to change a lot more. So it's more in line with the ability to do whatever the heck you want. I still believe that they have a lot to go before it's even close, but the auto, uh, the item store auto buy is now re-enable and unable, yeah, you can re-enable or disable it from the store. You can just click a button and it will turn off auto buy, which is such a handy feature for new players. I really like that because, you know, it always starts on by default. You just click it and then it's off. You don't have to do anything in the settings. It's just right there in the open. Boom. Done. Uh, they un uh, unidentified ability order. Um, there's now a new HUD. They're changing up how the HUDs look. Um, centered legacy and uncentered legacy is what it's going to be. Now it's going to be in hand, off hand, ability one, ability two, and ultimate. I'm not going to be a fan of this. I like the centered HUD. I really like the centered HUD. I use the centered HUD. Maybe I will like the new order of the new centered HUD. I might just stick with legacy. I've just been using legacy for a long time. Um, uh, the out-of-match screen and in-match ability info screen for uh, for matches will be now in a new default order. Okay, cool. Um, update to the free champion roster. They more or less, for once, they just changed a bunch of uh, more complex characters. And then they finally fixed the issue that I've had with this game for a long time as a new player. You would start the game and be like, okay, what is a frontline? <laughs> like, Ruckus is not a frontline character. He's good at DPS. He's a brawler. He is not a point tank. He, you can run him as a point tank. It might work, but he is an off tank thoroughly. And that's just not great for new players. They're now going to be giving you Ash for them. Uh, just Ash for free. Um, and I think Khan. 
instead of Ruckus, you now get Khan. So you get Khan and Ash. You get Tiberius instead of uh, Cassie. This was announced earlier on. You get Furia or uh, you get Furia and Saris as your healers. Generally, just more balanced, easy skill characters to learn that have a simple skill floor that most people I feel like can get adapted to pretty easily. Um, Ash is a bit dated. I wish I would have seen, you know, and Khan is a bit off tanky. Um, if they wanted an off tank that was good still, I would recommend giving them more like, you know, Khan's pretty good for an off tank, but maybe Ash for like, um, Fernando. He's pretty basic. Uh, but Ash also works. I don't have any problems with Ash Khan. I feel like they're both more off tanks. Uh, you could have given them Makoa instead of Khan. I feel like that would have worked really well, in my opinion. Makoa instead of Khan. But, hey. Uh, general stuff. Items. Haven has been thoroughly nerfed with an extra 50 credits added on top of it. It's almost back up to 400 credits similar to how Kronos used to be. It is outright the most expensive item in the store. Um, because they want to lower the amount of bulk there is. Also, all killing cards, all killing blow cards have been changed except for Lex and Tyra to be specifically on elimination. So if you have like uh, reduces cooldowns on kill, it's now reduces cooldowns on elimination. Really nice change. I thought that's how it worked for most of them, but apparently not. Um, Haven. Haven's now the most expensive item in store. It got bumped up once again to 6, 12, 18. As this is, I feel, Haven is the number one strongest item in the game still currently. That extra 50 credits, though, makes it a little less appealing. Because 350 credits scaled up three times, you know... It's no longer an even 1,000 credits, or, uh, yeah, it's no longer an even 900 credits to get the tier 3. It is now, like, um, an extra 150, so it's 1,050, I think, which is a lot more. People don't believe how, how much of a threshold difference that is. I think have, Haven's gonna plummet. I think less people are going to use Haven just because it's outright been nerfed, or like, nerfed and then buffed, it's, sure, it's good, but it's too expensive. I, I just don't think it's worth buying full Haven for the cost. Now, Veteran has also been nerfed. They've made it from 200 credits to 300 credits. Old Haven price. But, they also buffed it by a 5%. So, their, you know, their 5% is about the same. What you'll come to learn is Haven and Veteran make you die at roughly the same speed. The only difference is, like, you lose half a second, I think, if you go Veteran over Haven. But the main thing is Alt Charge. The enemy gets a lot less Alt Charge if they kill you while you have Haven. But if you get killed with Veteran, they get Alt Charge a lot quicker. Um, so, you know, just, just zooming in a bit. Um, yeah. This is actually an insane overhaul. Changing it from 350 and 200, or 300 and 200 to 350 and 300, I think Haven's gonna become the new, or Veteran's gonna become the new Haven, and Haven's gonna be a situational buy that you buy for tanks. And or you're going to just double, triple down into Haven and then get Veteran after. It's, it's either going to change a lot or nothing. They buffed Guardian. Still can't really recommend it. It dies too much. Nerfed lo Illuminate. It now costs more. So invisible people are now going to have a harder time. Or an easier time. Which is good. I feel like invisibility is an annoying thing, but a weaker thing. Characters who rely on it like Sky and Strix 
are really strong, but for other reasons at times. You know, like, Sky is strong if she has high burst damage. It's not, doesn't matter if she has, you know, a b bit more invisibility. She's actually getting a bit of a touch-up as well. Uh, and, uh, Strix is just flat out, his, his ability may keep him alive. That's it. Lethality. Um, provision is being removed. No one used it. It's kind of bad. There, it's being replaced with lethality. For, you will get a movement speed increase, uh, 20, 40, 60% for 2.5 seconds when getting an elimination. I will not be buying this item. If you buy it, I don't judge you. It's good on flanks, and that's about it. I mean, maybe you can make it work on, like, a aggressive Makoa play. Um, this essentially means that super fast Makoa is a build now. You can do. You can do really fast Makoa, but that's kind of cool. Um, Indroxus, he's getting Cursed Revolver to be his base kit, and, um... Now, Cursed Revolver, uh, changes it so your gun deals, uh, deals more damage, and then it deals, um, a recursive, like, damage over time effect that stacks every time you hit someone or something like that. Think of it like, you know, stuff like Betty's thing or Four's, like, progressive damage over time thing. Pretty good. It's not bad. I'd recommend it. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, Cursed Revolver is being reworked, so you apply essentially Betty's talent. Deal a damage over time that stacks up to a maximum of 50 per hit. Pretty good. Um, he's getting Spiteful reworked, so it uh, grants one out of one. All charge uh, when hitting an enemy with Defiant Fist. Uh, or Defiance. Uh, healing, uh, Vengeance is now new. You now heal whenever you hit an enemy with Defiance. Um, Betty's getting a flat-out buff to her direct damage. Reload speed, but getting a nerf to her best ability, Hail of Bombs. Oh no, not that big of a deal. Uh, a huge buff to her main hand. Maybe she'll actually be able to kill people with it. I don't know. It'd be good because, yeah. Um, Bomb King's no longer having a mid-air inaccuracy. Don't know why he did to begin with, but... Um, when you detonate a bomb, you move in speed, yeah. Uncontrollable when you get an elimination. Once again, Buck has a new card. Really... Uh, they changed all the elimination kill the blow stuff, so I'm gonna skip over most of that. Cassie, you know, uh, explosion radius of blast shot instead of, um, whatever Megaton did before, which I think was, like, knockback or something. Um, Corvus getting nerfed, I think. Nerfed and then buffed. Yeah, nerfed and then buffed. Just the general rebalancing of what's good on him. Damn, that's a lot of card reworks. Um, if you want the specifics on that, come and check it out. Uh, Dredge getting a inaccuracy removal in midair. That's kind of good. Uh, Kraken reduced activation time, which is actually pretty good. He really needed that. Um, Drogos getting a small, you know, thing where it changed to elimination. Elimination, elimination, elimination. Uh, Fernando, last stand has now been lowered or reduced the health scaling value of last stand to 90, 90. Um, reduced the activation threshold to 35%. Don't know if that's a good card. Um, incinerate, huge change, 5 Point zero five percent of a change, not that big a deal. Hot pursuit, uh, no longer has an initial cooldown before the effect is active again. Cool. I don't know if this is that important. Cards, Furia, Kindred Soul, reduce the size of the targeting cone. So you're gonna not have 
you randomly right click someone 2000, you know, units away from the actual person you're right clicking, you're not going to shoot off to the very right and hit someone. That's good. Solar blessing. Huge buff. I know what this says. I know that it says 2000 to 3000, but it means 200 to one, or 300. They have changed the healing from 200 a second to 300 a second. That is old solar blessing values. Um, added a small delay before you can reactivate pyre strike. So you can no longer point blank pyre strike. This is a big deal. <laughs> um, added a minimum duration for pyre strike to activate after reactivation regardless of the initial duration. This is to fix the bug of it just randomly disappearing. But this is a large deal for Furia. Her Solar Blessing's actually good now. You should use Solar Blessing. And her right click's better. Furia might actually be a decent character once again. Okay, Grok is also getting a talent change. Spiritual Domain is changed from 750 to 800. Pretty good change. Uh, Grok is also getting, er, Grover. Blossom's being decreased from 800 to 650, but getting the standard, uh, blossoming effect, where it's, you know, 300 over 0 0.2 seconds, uh, but you can now see his heal circle radius. I thought you could before, but apparently I'm crazy. I, I just, I was seeing things. Um, it's good to know where Grover can heal with his thing, but that's good. Crippling throw has been increased damage. Uh, throwing axe no longer has, you know, inaccuracy in the air. Deep root got a huge rework. Instead of crippling, even though it's called deep root, uh, crippling throw still cripples one person, but then chains to two other people, applying a healing aura that will heal allies nearby those enemies. Huge nerf. Huge nerf on Gro Grover part. Um, ramp rampaging bloom heal now, uh, heal for now a burst of five hundred, and then an additional three hundred uh, for two seconds, and then when you finishing uh at your finishing vining, I at, at the location you finish vining too. Weird. So lowers your overall healing. For an additional 300 and 2 seconds for where you vine to? Or is it now you burst for 500 and an additional... Oh, it's wherever you vine to, you just heal there as well. Your Q's independent. You essentially now have two Q's on Grover. One on your vine and one on your Q. Which is actually a pretty interesting concept. I don't know if it's going to work out very well. Inara, remove the in -air inaccuracy. Huge deal. Inara would just jump and she'd not be able to shoot anything anymore. It would just fly, like, off into the sun. But now you can actually hit people even though you're jumping. Genos, uh, Starf Splitter. Increased damage. Space. Actually increased damage. You can kill people fa faster and better. Uh, Kinesa, Carbine, reduced damage, increased scoping time, or increased, uh, charge time, decreased jumping, or de decreased accuracy in the air after jumping, huge nerfs, um, teleporter, uh, reduced the time it takes you to teleport, which is actually a buff, um, oppressor mines are now, don't target mounted enemies, which is a huge deal for Kinesa, She's getting utterly nerfed. Uh, Headhunter added a uh, 0 0.5 pre prep fire. Um, so to your E, um, added a 0 0.5 second prep fire. So to my knowledge, that means whenever you right click, you can no longer just spam right click or spam right click, left click, left click. Just utterly shoot like 20 billion beams. You now have to hold it for at least 0 0.25 seconds before it will crit shot, which kind of sucks. She's just been utterly nerfed. Uh, her Presser Mind talent now increases the cooldown of Presser Mind 
by two seconds. Just utter nerfs across the board. Bunch of card nerfs as well. Koga, Gale Storm, generates three energy uh, when hitting an enemy with Skewer. Skewer. Three five fifteen, I think is uh three uh three six nine, twelve fifteen, pretty good. Not that bad. Not that great. Uh, Lex uh, marking uh UI indicator. Um, the target. Oh, your marked target now has a UI indicator for when you're chosen by Lex. Actually, big deal, huge thing for Lex. Nerf. Nerf. Because he used to be able to just get away with not. Um, Leon, reduce cooldown by elimination. Lilith, uh, decrease the knockback applied to by your shots with Crimson Heart. I mean, I never noticed that, but okay. Uh, Bloody Hex, uh, increase the range. That's actually a good change. Maldamba, mending spirits, reduce the cooldown applied... When you miss by uh, 1.75 to 2 seconds now. Octavia's Distortion Field getting a nerf. Because it's way too strong. But she's getting a... Uh, she's just getting flat out a nerf again. But an increased range. Cool. Uh, Pip. Mega Potion's getting a buff. That's good to know. Um, Subservience Rework. And now, uh, all of your, uh, living allies are healed 2% for a maximum of 2% or uh, for a maximum of their health when, uh, each soul is harvested. So you're now just a huge generator of heals. You just shoot something and you're healing everyone nearby you for two maximum HP, which is 2% maximum HP, which is, uh, roughly... Not that high, but, you know, it adds up. It adds up. You're actually, you know, wait, this applies to allies regardless of range. You're just flat out, never mind, you're just flat out a, a healer now. If you pick subservience, you're just a healer. You just shoot people and it heals everyone for 2% of their maximum HP. That could be a big deal. I don't know if it is going to be, but it could be. <laughs> Uh, Ray, Soul Link no longer prioritizes allies over enemies. Why? Oh, if, if you go restraint. Okay, sure. That That's a good thing. Never mind. Um, card, refreshing break. Uh, changed from 0 0.2 to 1 point. I think that's, uh, the increased alt charge? That's fair. Sand Trap now increases the air... Uh, the cooldown. Um, Sky's wrist is now stronger, and she got a rework to preparation. Now that it reduces her damage taken by 75% and increases her movement speed by 20% and uh, reduces the maximum hidden by 2%, uh, but you can no longer leave hidden, or the duration of hidden cannot be increased. Okay. So you just reduce the damage, increase the movement speed, reduces the total duration, but cannot increase the duration. I mean, it it's pretty good. I mean, nice change either way. You can actually run away. General uh, Strix got a HP increase. Okay. Uh, Tiberius, damage increase. Didn't need it. Don't know why. Um, but okay. Um, Torvald... Uh, Recharger now affected by Guardian. Didn't know that happened. Didn't know that didn't happen before, but that's really good. Uh, Tyra got increased damage. Um, Vatu got dash. Uh, his dash reduction, damage reduction on dash is reduced. So maybe he'll actually be killable when he dashes. Uh, seven got a huge ton of buffs to his damage in every way except for mag dump but here's the big catch you can now dash in the air with your dash but bombs will only spawn close if you're or bombs will only spawn if you're close to the ground but here's the biggest thing bombs can be spawned by dash but can now be 
or bombs spawned by Dash can now be shot and destroyed. They'll have 300 HP. This is a big deal, big deal for him. Those bomb dash sets are now just going to be trash. You're just going to shoot the bombs. Don't run into them. Shoot them. It's just that simple. Smoothing out his damage fall off in each mode. That's pretty good. Decree. I think that's a buff. Or um, incorrectly taking the time to... Okay, it took too long to uh, charge fear. Good to know. He got a buff. Um, his talent overcharge reduced the time uh, before damage occurs. Uh, that's good. Victor got a damage increase just flat out. Vivian got a damage increase. Bora got a projectile uh, decreased on deadly scythe. Not surprised. Uh, Yagroth got a buff. Buff. Just flat out. In almost every, in every way imaginable. Just flat out. Yagroth got a buff. Yagroth might come back, judging by the Solar Blessing and Yag buff. Yagroth might actually be good again. Uh, Ying, uh, life exchange. Now, if you miss, it will actually, you know, you'll get the reduced, uh, cooldown if you miss your Shatter Heal. Your similar to how Damba is. Zan, killing blows, elimination. And then there was a bunch of bug fixes, like normal. That's actually a pretty big patch notes. Um, a lot of bug changes, or a lot of character changes, a lot of them are really good and big deals, and a lot of them are not big deals at all, even slightly, and don't matter. Either way, I hope that Paladins is going to be good next patch, because if it is, I might record more. I might actually, like, record some. I, I've been really bad about recording Paladins content, because... There's not a lot to do in Paladins besides just playing Paladins. And I don't know. If you guys want to see me just play Paladins, then, you know, I, I'll start playing more Paladins. Just say so. But for the time being, that's the patch notes. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you know what to do. I'll see you all next time. I love you guys, and goodbye!